Halito, I'd like to begin today by thanking my ancestors and my elders and my family and friends and especially my coworkers at Trees, Water, and People. They know how to do things right. So as we begin, I want you to think about a question. What is porn? These images, these words, are widely considered to be poverty porn. And why do we call it porn? Well, because like the worst aspects of porn, it is uh, a way to get our attention and nothing more. And it is a, a powerful, powerful image. It, can, it has the power to draw us in, but it also has the power to repel us in many ways, and in some ways, it can even make us feel a little guilty. And like porn, many people are uncomfortable with it. This is an uncomfortable story that these images and words tell. This is the story of poverty porn and the indigenous American. And, and I, as the storyteller, today as a Native woman and a person who's been a journalist and a teacher and a person who currently works in the nonprofit field, I'm deeply conflicted. How do I demonstrate poverty porn to you without perpetuating the problems of poverty porn? And I am conflicted coming from two worlds because I speak with a certain amount of privilege but sometimes I'm we, and sometimes I'm they. When I was growing up, I felt that I was in privilege, and the people I knew were kind and funny, and uh, we had plenty to eat, and I had horses. But when I left home and I went to college, I was immediately labeled third world, because I checked the race box. And I was also given, automatically given, extra counselors and extra tutoring. And instead of feeling like I was helped and welcomed to college world, I felt alienated. And I felt like I really couldn't cut it at college. Now, I can tell you that I certainly did cut it at college, and I went on to get a master's degree. But the question lingered, why am I sometimes we, and why am I sometimes they? And why, of all things, was I considered third world? So when the story isn't about us, then the people in the story become those people over there not one of us. And the people telling the story, like journalists writing for their audiences, and charities and nonprofits asking their donors for money, and even individuals exchanging photos on the internet and talking with friends, they're all over here. And in many ways, it's like a hand with all the fingers talking with one another about the thumbs way over there, not one of us. But the reality is that we're all connected through the internet, through the media, and the thumbs see the stories, and they see the photos, and the thumbs hear you talking about them, and they hear you talking for them. And poverty porn affects them. So poverty porn has characters, and you recognize them. Starving kids in Africa, dirty white trash, 
thugs in the hood. And the character for today is poor but proud Indian. And poor but proud Indian is in distress. And the hero of the story of poverty porn and the indigenous American is a government program or a generous donor or perhaps a guy who's got street cred because he's been to the res. And without the hero, nothing is going to get better for poor but proud Indian. And this story is told and retold so many times. And yet, when we see poverty porn, we don't always think of ourselves as that hero. In fact, we may be attracted to that story. Oh, look at this. And at the same time, repelled. Ooh, look at that. And we may even feel a little guilty or unsure of what to do. And many times that means we learn to tune the story out altogether. And this is a very old story, this story of indigenous Americans. Poverty porn in indigenous American has been around for years, is the age of some of the photos that we saw tell us. And Christopher Columbus perhaps told that story a little too well. And yes, poverty does exist in our communities. But if we are telling the same simple one-sided story, it becomes the only story. And it's told and retold so many times that we come to believe it's true. You believe it about us, that we are helpless, hopeless, and weak. And we believe it about ourselves, about our people, even when we don't live in poverty. Helpless hopeless, and weak. But we are strong enough to have survived over 500 years of genocide and oppression. We are strong, and we are capable. Know better and do better is the theme of this conference, so let's start with some new characters. How about community activist, grandmother teacher, skateboard park builder? How about comedian, politician, successful child, and graduate? And what a better time, perfect time, to start to create that new story. Here we are on the eve of Columbus Day, or Indigenous Peoples Day, or as I like to call it, next Monday. And, you know, what a perfect time for us to create this new story. And Native American Heritage Month is right around the corner. So let's get started with that new story. Journalists, you have a very important job. You document history every day. So take a cue from the Native media. Cover all kinds of stories. Cover the story behind the poverty. Take a cue from the native media and look at these images. What did they tell you? The images at the beginning, those are all from mainstream media and history books. The ones at the end, those are all from native media. They're all from uh, I picked them off off the internet from charities and, and nonprofit organizations that get it, that are telling these wise, wonderful stories. So charities tell those wise, wonderful stories. You have the power. Because just like journalists, you're documenting history every day as well. And Native American history is American history, and we're all living that history every day. So are you telling stories of that we're helpless, hopeless, and weak? Or are you making that emotional appeal that you need to make to bring in money, to do the very good work that I know you intend to do? Are you doing that from a place that says, this is a strong community 
This is a capable community. This is an accomplished community. Make that emotional appeal from that. And as individuals, what can we do better? Well, we can be very good at taking a critical eye, looking around us, and recognizing when we see poverty porn, and not being fooled by it, demanding more. We, as potential donors and potential volunteers, we need to ask ourselves, are these charities and nonprofit organizations, are they showing us people that we would like to work beside, to get to know real people, maybe even learn something from the people? So um, however you decide that you're going to tell the story from here on out, tell it with us. We're right here.